Picture an electric motor that drops heavy steel, uses fewer magnets, and still delivers insane torque. That's the promise behind Deep Drive, a Munich startup shaking up the EV world with a clever dual rotor idea. I met their engineers at a conference and came away surprised by how practical the design looks, not just how bold it sounds. Today, I'll walk you through the core engineering, why removing the yoke matters, and the one winding trick that makes the whole machine possible. No hype, no fluff, just the key details and what they mean. And yes, we'll keep it simple. The Motormost EV's use. Before we can judge Deep Drive's idea, we need a quick mental model of the motor that powers most electric cars today. The common choice is a radial flux permanent magnet machine. It sounds complex, but the jobs are clear. The stator is the fixed part. It holds copper coils and steel teeth that guide magnetic flow. The rotor is the spinning part. It carries permanent magnets. When three-phase alternating current flows through the stator coils, each phase takes turns rising and falling. Together they create a rotating magnetic field. That moving field pulls on the rotor magnets, so the rotor follows the field and keeps spinning. The shaft turns and the car moves. It is called radial flux because most of the magnetic force crosses the air gap in a radial direction, outward and inward like spokes on a wheel. The magnetic loop leaves one pole, travels through steel, crosses the air gap, and returns through another steel path. This layout is popular because it is proven, compact, and easy to integrate with a gearbox or a drive unit. But it also has trade-offs to get more torque. You often add more active surface area, more copper, or more current. That can mean more heat, more weight, and more cost. So every new design is trying to squeeze more work out of each gram of material. Two rotors, one job. Deep Drive keeps the same basic ingredients, magnets and copper, but it changes the layout in a way that affects everything else. Instead of one rotor around one stator, it uses two rotors with a stator in the middle. There is an inner rotor and an outer rotor. The two rotors are mechanically linked, so they spin together as one unit. Picture two slices of bread moving in sync, with the stator sandwiched between them. Dual rotor machines are not new. You may have seen dual rotor concepts from companies like Yasa, but those are often axial flux designs, where the magnetic field travels along the axis, like two plates facing each other. Axial flux can deliver high torque in a thin shape, yet it can be tougher to build in very high volumes. You are working with wide disks, tight gaps, and big forces that try to bend and warp parts. Deep Drive's twist is to use a dual rotor approach, while staying closer to a radial flux form. In plain terms, the motor still looks like a cylinder, but the active air gap area effectively doubles because you now have two rotor-to-stator interfaces. More surface area means you can create more torque for a given size, or you can hit the same torque with less copper and less current. Either way, you get room to improve efficiency and reduce heat. This is where the design starts to matter, because once you change the magnetic geometry, you can also rethink the supporting parts that used to be required in a single rotor motor. Why remove the yoke? In a standard automotive motor, you will almost always find a yoke, a thick steel ring wrapped around the stator. It does three big jobs. First, it is a backbone. It holds the stator teeth and windings together, and keeps the whole assembly stiff when the motor is under load. Second, it helps complete the magnetic circuit. Steel is a much better path for magnetic flux than air, so the yoke guides the field and links one pole to the next through a low resistance route. Third, it helps with cooling. It conducts heat away from the hot copper windings and into the housing, where coolant can carry it away. The catch is that the yoke is mostly passive. It adds weight without directly creating torque. In a dual rotor sandwich, a yoke can also be a problem because it would sit right where you want the two sides to interact. That extra chunk of steel increases the gap between active parts, which weakens magnetic coupling and throws away the benefit of having two rotors in the first place. 
Deep Drive chose to go yokeless. The good news is that a dual rotor topology can close the magnetic loops differently. The north pole on one rotor can link directly to a south pole on the other rotor, so the field travels across the stator region and returns through the opposite rotor. In simple terms, the two rotors help complete each other's loop, which reduces the need for a big outer return path. But the yoke was also doing the boring, vital work, keeping everything rigid and moving heat out of the coils. Remove it, and you must replace those functions somehow. That is the engineering puzzle Deep Drive had to solve, and the answer lives inside the stator windings. The winding trick that changes everything. Right before the team explained their core trick, the conversation took a quick detour. 8 Sleep makes the Pod 5, a smart cover that heats or cools your bed, even each side separately, from about 55 degrees Fahrenheit to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Sensors track your sleep and breathing without a wearable. Now back to the motor. When I spoke with co-founder and chief engineer Alexander Rosen, he was very direct. The winding is the heart of the machine. In a yokeless dual rotor setup, the magnets on the inner and outer rotors create forces that try to twist and distort the stator conductors. In a normal motor, the yoke and steel stack help hold everything rigid. Here, that big steel ring is gone, so the copper itself must help carry the load. Deep Drive solves this by moving away from soft wire windings and using rigid conductor bars. Those bars are arranged in a patented cross-winding pattern that forms a truss-like structure. Think of a bridge truss, cross members that resist twisting. This geometry makes the winding torsion stiff, so it can keep its shape even when magnetic forces try to warp it. The clever part is that the winding now does double duty. It transfers torque reaction out of the active part of the machine and into the housing, helping to stabilize the stator. And because the bars are thick and continuous, they also act as a heat highway. Heat generated in the copper can flow along the bars into the end shields and housing, where coolant can remove it. One design choice solves the structural problem and the cooling problem at the same time. There is another benefit that matters just as much as the physics. It is buildable. A fancy topology that cannot be made repeatably is a dead end for cars. Deep Drive argues that these bar windings and their cross pattern are well suited to automated high volume manufacturing. The windings are not just making torque, they are also holding the machine together and keeping it cool. From in-wheel to drive unit, Deep Drive shows the motor in a few forms, and the headline demo is an in-wheel version. Putting the motor in the wheel can simplify the drivetrain. Power goes straight to the road without a long shaft, a gearbox, or extra joints, so you cut losses and remove parts. It can also free up space inside the car for batteries or a bigger cabin. The pushback you often hear is unsprung mass. Any weight that sits in the wheel and moves with the suspension can hurt ride and handling. That concern is real in physics, but it is not always a deal breaker in practice. In-wheel motors have become lighter, and suspensions have become smarter. We are even seeing big brands revisit the idea. Renault has chosen an in-wheel layout for the sport version of the Renault 5 Turbo 3E. Deep Drive also says people who have tried their test drives talk positively about how the car feels. If you like numbers, their claims are attention-grabbing. They talk about more than 2,000 newton meters of torque from a package around 34 kilograms, with peak power around 180 kilowatts. Because the motor is yokeless, they also say efficiency improves at low torque. That matters because real cars spend a lot of time at low load, cruising or gently accelerating, not sitting at peak power. Deep Drive puts the overall drive cycle efficiency gain at about 20%, which is the kind of number automakers notice. I had one worry when I first heard dual rotor. Twice the rotors, so twice the magnets, right? Magnets are expensive, and supply can be tight. Deep Drive answers that the dual rotor magnetic circuit uses magnets more effectively, so they can reduce magnetic material, even cutting it roughly in half in their target designs. At the same time, removing the yoke means far less iron, with claims around an 80% reduction in iron content. 
combine those material changes with the torque density gains, and they argue you end up with about a 30% lower cost per newton meter of torque. This is why partnerships are forming quickly, including work with BMW and other global automakers. The roadmap is to begin small-scale series production by 2026, and then move to large-scale mass production by 2028. If you zoom out, Deep Drive's motor is not magic. It's smart choices stacked together. Two rotors sharing the work, no dead steel yoke, and windings that carry both torque and heat where you want them. That mix can mean smaller motors, less iron, fewer magnets, and better efficiency, where cars spend most of their time. The next big test is scale. Can they build these quickly, cheaply, and with the same quality at volume? Their roadmap says early series production in 2026, and true mass production in 2028. I'll be watching. If they do, EV drivetrains may look different.